Hey guys, welcome back. So this week's video, I'm gonna build this walnut top for the magnetic levitating device. Then I'm gonna levitate this aluminum oxide rock. This is the most common material used in sandpaper grit. This is a chunk of it before it would be ground up into the different grit sizes. This is gonna be displayed at the AWF show in Vegas this year, so let's get started. Let's start by selecting some wood. I'm going to use walnut for this project because, hey, who doesn't like walnut? Sending it through the planer before resawing it. This helps keep the cut straight and I can go right to glue up. This piece was a little thicker than I needed, so instead of wasting material, I cut off a quarter inch, which I'm sure I'll use later. You can see the blade come through the knot. Pretty cool. Time for glue up. Using an ink roller really helps apply a quick, even layer of glue. See what I mean? Nice and even. Next, into the clamps. These Plano clamps are great and make glue ups easy and accurate. While that dries, let's work on the router template using half inch MDF. I start by cutting a rough piece to size. Now we're at the design phase, and this is entirely up to you and what you want to do. I chose a rounded and curved triangular shape. Using my homemade metal bowstring, I draw three subtle curves. Here you can see the marking tools I used for this. Having several options to draw your design is very helpful. Next, it's time to get jiggy with it. It's on to the disc sander for the convex sides. The camera is a little shaky here. The tripod must be touching the sanding cart. Nice job, cameraman. Now the oscillating spindle sander for the concave sides. Just a little handwork and your template is ready to go. Time to unclamp the piece and trace the template. I'm using a white wax pencil because it shows up much clearer on walnut. That's a great tip right there. You're welcome. Cutting to rough size with the miter saw. Notice I take several passes and cut through the back of the piece before the front to minimize pinching the blade. Then it's back to the bandsaw. And final thicknessing in the planer. Next is making my own double-sided tape using blue tape and CA glue. This is an excellent method and can be used on many different surfaces and applications. Time for the big daddy bit. I've used this bit a lot and last on some Ipe, so it could use a sharpening. But this is an excellent bit, especially for tough grain situations. And this wooden screw adjustable dust collector has come in handy many times and it helps keep debris away from the bit. Back to some hand sanding. 
Opening up the grain really helps the sandpaper cut cleaner and last longer. And this Echo Blue paper from Unita is really nice. Finish with an eighth inch round over, giving the piece a nice smooth transition. Now it's time to let the machines take over. Having center lines front and back helps them cut straight. They're machines, not humans, yet. I turn the piece over to cut the recess for the electromagnet. Epoxy time! This might not be a river table, but it's still epoxy. Fill her up. Drum sander does make quick work of removing the epoxy, but you could just as well do it with a hand sander. Time to work up the grits from 120 to 220. I'll be applying a lacquer finish, so no need to go any higher than 220 grit. I like to do a final sand by hand with the highest grit. Here's a quick tip. Use your big sanding eraser to remove debris as you sand to get a better cut. Now let's take it for a little spin before finish is applied. Next, put a couple coats of lacquer, and by a couple, I mean ten, and she'll shine like a solar-powered flashlight. And here she is, all finished and at the AWF show. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe. I've got a lot of cool videos coming up, like the soft maple epoxy resin table for the top, and also this Brooklyn Bridge replica. It's gonna be pretty cool, so stay tuned. Mm -hmm.